Here is the Apple Insider review of the Apple Card. Hey everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. And today we're gonna to be talking about this. Apple's first foray into FinTech outside of Apple Pay. We're gonna cover not only how Apple Card works as a credit card, but we're gonna cover its unique features and its design that makes Apple Card unique. Let's go ahead and start things off with the design of the Apple Card. So first up, the design of the Apple Card. Now, the Apple Card is made out of metal. In fact, it's made out of titanium. Now, while it is titanium, that means it's lighter than a lot of the other metal cards out there on the market. For example, the Amex Platinum card, a widely seen card, it is made out of stainless steel. They're the exact same size, but the stainless steel Amex weighs a lot more than the Platinum of the Apple card. The Apple card is a lot more rigid. It does not bend or flex nearly as much as the Amex Platinum does. Now, that could mean a few different things, including you could have issues swiping the physical Apple card if you were at something like a gas station pump that has a little bit of a wiggle to it. There are different skimmers out there and that one could pose an issue with the Apple Card just because it won't flex nearly as much as others. Titanium also happens to be a little bit porous. So because of that porous surface, it can discolor fairly easily if you put it in things like a wallet or pants that happen to be dyed, such as jeans, which are very common things. That's why cards like the Amex Platinum chose to not have a stark white finish like the Apple Card has. But in reality, all cards do get degraded over time. And if it ever gets bad enough that you don't love it, you can just simply have Apple send you a replacement card. Otherwise, the finish of the Apple Card looks amazing. It has a pristine white coating, which is done in a multi-layered process with the Apple, MasterCard, and Goldman Sachs logos etched into them. Your name is then printed on the front and that lower left-hand corner. There's literally nothing else on this card other than your name, all three of those logos, and the MagStripe strip along the back. Now, speaking of that strip, that's just one of the areas that Apple has taken to an extreme. It has moved it from the normal spot along the top back of the card to the bottom. Now, that doesn't really make sense to a lot of people. Why bother moving the magnetic strip? Well, it's because Apple's attention to detail. Now, when you swipe the Apple Card, you still see that Apple Card logo there at the top. So the strip is in the reader and you still see the Apple logo there. Just a small little thing that Apple thinks about. You can see they also changed the design of the chip on Apple Card. It is now just six simple ovals instead of the random lines that you see with any other chip on any other credit card. Small thing, not a lot of people are gonna notice, but Apple definitely did notice. Aside from the design of the physical card itself, we also have to look at the design of the wallet app because a lot of information is included in that wallet app. Pretty much everything you need to do other than swiping the physical Apple card is housed in the wallet app. Between paying for everything, accessing card numbers, locking your card, requesting new card numbers, all of that is done within the wallet app. And really we love how it looks. It is simple, straightforward, and Apple makes it clear how much money you owe and where you're spending your money, including how much interest you're going to pay based on how much you pay each month. Now, Apple obviously makes more money if you hold a balance and rack up those interest charges. And Apple is one of the few that is putting that information forward and front and center for you to see so that you know how much that's gonna cost you and you're kind of getting ahead of it. You know how much those payments are really going to be adding up to and you can hopefully pay those numbers down before you get too far behind. That starts to bring us to what makes Apple Card unique. Apple's implementation of combining software and hardware into one perfect package. Apple makes everything just work across the board. As soon as you get the Apple Card, you go through that wonderful setup process of opening that white envelope, seeing that little contact point there, you just hold your phone near it and instantly it's set up. Activating Apple Card is more akin to activating a pair of AirPods than it is a normal traditional credit card. As soon as you are approved for the credit card inside of the app, you can immediately use it across all your devices. You don't have to wait for it to arrive in the mail. That includes not only on your iPhone, but your Apple Watch, your iPad, and even your Mac. When you go in to fill a credit card number online, it even pulls up as Apple Card. 
Other credit cards will show, but they'll show as maybe a card number and you have to remember which is which in that case. But with Apple Card, it's already entered and it's already labeled as Apple Card. So you know I don't need to I don't need to know what card number I'm paying with. I just need to know that I want to pay with Apple Card. And Apple makes that so easy. Everything about the Apple Card is easy, whether you're swiping it, whether you're using Apple Pay or paying in the app. Everything across the board is simple. That includes requesting a new card number if you ever feel like yours is taken online. If you have to contact support, you can just do it right through iMessage. Paying through the app where you can easily see how much interest you're going to be owing based on how much you pay. Or locking your card if you make sure if you want to make sure it's not being used or if it gets stolen or misplaced, anything like that. It's so easy to lock your card in the app. Everything about Apple Card is easy and that's what it makes it different from a lot of the other cards out there. Looking through the wallet app, it is very easy and everything is front and center. Open the wallet app and you'll see your Apple Card right up front and you immediately have your balance on your card, your weekly activity, when your payment is due and how much, as well as a list of your latest transactions. All of these different panels can be jumped into for additional information. Going into total balance, you can see any payments and credits as well as any new spending. Weekly activity gives you a better breakdown, including daily cash and where the categories of your money are being spent. If you tap on a particular latest transaction, such as my top one here from Tentry, you can see not only my current transaction, but any other transactions I've also made at that same retailer. And a running total at the bottom tells you how much you spent in this most recent month. In the upper right hand corner is a little ellipsis that brings you to all the other information about Apple Card, such as contacting or calling support, scheduling reoccurring payments, getting your actual card information, your card details such as your APR and available credit, any bank accounts which multiple can be linked to, locking the card, re requesting a replacement card, and updating billing addresses or turning off notifications for transactions. Simply put, there's no digging around, there's no third party apps, it's all right there on your phone where you don't have to do anything to access everything that you need. So how does Apple Card function as a credit card? Is it a worthy credit card in the larger credit card landscape? Well, rewards are just meh. They aren't great, they aren't bad. They're pretty much in the middle of the pack. You get 2% anytime you use Apple Pay, which is a growing category. More and more places are accepting Apple Pay, both in stores and online. If you do use the Apple physical card, it's only a 1% cashback. Not great by any means. There are a lot of better 2% cashback cards that are out there. However, you do get 3% anytime you go through Apple. And that includes Apple stores, as well as Apple's digital offerings, such as the App Store and iTunes. So if you have things like Netflix, Hulu, CBS All Access, Showtime, Apple Music, anything like that being built through iTunes or the App Store, you're easily getting 3% back on all of those purchases. So that's something to take into consideration. If you're going purely for rewards, Apple Card may not be the best option for you. But if you look at the broader offering of Apple Card, including the ease of use and just the status symbol of having a physical Apple Card, it's definitely an enticing proposition. Aside from all of Apple's benefits, you also get all the benefits of MasterCard. You can view inside of the app all the network benefits that give you different benefits because you're using a MasterCard. Because this is an Apple Card, but you are partnering with MasterCard as well as Goldman Sachs when you use Apple Card. So, is the Apple Card a good credit card? Really, yes, it is a good credit card. But as far as just a credit card goes, it is only good. Rewards are decent and they are given back to you in the form of daily cash, which is pretty much the best way to get them. No obfuscated points or miles, straight up cash deposited into your Apple Cash card each and every day based on what you spent. There's no better way to get rewards. But it isn't all about just the credit card and the number of rewards that you're getting back. It's how easy it is to use the card, how easy it is to keep track of, how easy it is to be secure. There are no better ways than what Apple is offering to use and protect yourself with the Apple Card. Apple Card is not just a card, it's an experience, it's a product, it's an Apple product. And in that way, it's different from everything else out there. From the activation, to the using it, to paying it, everything about the Apple Card is easy and simple and a joy to do. If you want something different and you're tired of all the other credit cards out there, and you do shop a lot at Apple, then the Apple Card is definitely something worth checking into. 
If you want to get any more information on Apple Card, there's a link down below in the description. And I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below and directly on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.